students, today we are doing one of my favorite stories, The Prison Angel, from Beverly Hills to prison. Now this story is fascinating because it starts in the total opposite to a Mexican prison. Let me introduce you to Mary Clark. Mary Clark had the most beautiful life. Now, um, as a young girl, her dad desired to do the best for his family. They didn't, weren't wealthy people, but he started his own little fabric and material uh, factory and started making money. He worked hard, day and night, to try and provide for his family because he wanted to do the best for them. The company kept growing and growing and growing, and after a while he had several factories. And when she was in primary school, they moved to the very exclusive Beverly Hills. Now, Beverly Hills is the most exceptional place. This is where all the movie stars um, live. Now, if you look at some of these beautiful houses, this gives you an idea of the type of properties that are out there. This house looks like this from the front. The shopping there is Rodeo Drive. Now, once you walk down Rodeo Drive, you will see that all the shops are all designer and fashion brands. And you would see that the average car that is parked there looks like one of these beautiful specimens. It's because the people who live in Beverly Hills are very, very, very rich. And it's one of the best postcodes in America, 90210. Some of you would know about the TV show, Beverly Hills 90210. Now, it's in this beautiful area where Mary Clark grows up. She goes to a really good school and she starts working out a plan for her life. She decides what she's going to do is she's going to marry a really well-qualified, handsome man who is very dependable and will provide enough money for them to live in Beverly Hills too. And she would have five beautiful children, she would stay home with them and she would raise them as an almost perfect mother and they would also go to a very good school in Beverly Hills and they would all go to university and get qualified and in her beautiful life they would have overseas holidays. You know what? Mary Clark did exactly that. She met a very attractive young man that was very trustworthy, very hard working and they got married, they lived in Beverly Hills, they had five beautiful children, she raised them all at home, and they lived in the most beautiful place with lots of money, and enjoyed their life very, very much. After 25 years of marriage, all the kids had grown up, they'd left home, they were living their own lives, and one day, while she was sitting at home, she got a letter in the mail. The letter was that her husband of 25 years decided to divorce her. She didn't see it coming. They were never arguing. She couldn't see anything wrong in their relationship. But he had decided to end their relationship. This, this life, no amount of money could make her happy. Poor Mary, she went home and she just cried and cried and cried cried for several days. When her kids found out, they called her, they came and visited. But after a few weeks, they also had to get on with their lives. She was sitting there crying and um, just thought, well, this is not doing anything for me. I'm just here crying. And there are other people who have got it much tougher than me. And then Mary went to church and there she found the priest and said to him, um, Father, I need to do something. And the the priest said, Well, Mary, I, um, I've got this mission out to Mexico where we go and help the poor there. She said, Father, I'm in. I'm going to help you. So this very wealthy lady phones up her children and she says, Kids, I'm going on a missions trip to Mexico. They said, Mom, are you okay? Mom, you... You are only used to five star. What are you doing, mom? Are you, are you sure you want to do it? 
she said, you know what? I did my best. I raised my children in the best way that I possibly could. Now, I am going to go and love somebody else's children who can't do it properly. And that's exactly what she did. Instead of sitting at home feeling sorry for herself, she went and took this disaster and with God's help turned it into something amazing. With the priest, she started this mission into Mexico. Now, you know the United States of America is a really wealthy country. But just over the border, there are slums like this where people are going through the rubbish um, piles to try and find food. There are little children with dirt roads in the middle of nowhere. What the Americans did was they actually built, you know, Donald Trump's big wall he wants to build. There is actually a really big fence already. This is what it looks like. This is actually someone attempting to get over this fence to get into the United States of America. Loads of people from South America try to get into America, the United States, because it is so, so wealthy. And there are so many more opportunities than in their own hometowns. Down here you can see, this is agricultural land in the United States of America. There's the fence, and right next to it, you've got this huge population of poor Mexicans living right there. This town here has got the most interesting story. When they were building that fence, and you can see there's the wall, when they were building it, they did it in one night. The police and the army came in, and in the middle of this town that was built right on the border, the police and the army came in, separated everybody, stopped anybody from going over the border. Some people were sleeping over on other sides of the town, visiting grandparents or um, just visiting with someone else. And that night, they split them in the middle and built a fence right through it. Everyone who was on this side of the town was in the United States of America and a U.S. citizen. And people on that side of town were automatically Mexican citizens. That would split up families where the parents were living on this side and the kids just went over to visit grandma for the night and they were stuck in Mexico. This kind of gives you an idea of what happened. So um, you can see the wealth in America and the old dilapidated buildings in Mexico. And this is where the very wealthy Mary Clark came and she started serving. She would give them medicine. She would feed the children. She would clothe them. She would teach them. She did amazing work. One day, she was in La Mesa City in Mexico with the priest, and they got lost. And they had to stop for directions, and the place they found to ask for direction was this La Mesa prison. La Mesa prison is one of the highest security prisons in Mexico. This is not a place where nice people go. The people who come here are maximum security prison, prisoners, so many of them are violent, committed crimes like drug running, um, assassinations, things like that. Now, the problem with this prison is it was built for 6,000 people, but it houses 7,100 people. So there's 1,100 people extra crammed in there. You can imagine the conditions if you've got to cram an extra 1,000 people into a space that was not built for it. The security is very tight. There are guards and guard towers everywhere. The guards are armed, as you can see, and they would shoot you on sight if you tried to escape. So people would have to escape over three rows of fences if they tried to escape. One of them electrified. The other one has um, guard dogs walking up and down, plus the guards in the guard towers would actually shoot you if you tried to escape. So as they stop there to ask for directions, Mary Clark feels a calling to come and work with these people. And the priest said to her, are you sure, Mary? She said, most definitely, Father. I can feel that God is calling me to come work with these people. He was quite shocked because it's a prison full of men, many of them violent criminals. And she started coming into prison and serving some of these men. She was already an older lady, 
and many of them saw her as a little bit of a mother. And at that stage, she decided she was going to make a massive leap in her life. She sold all the wealth that she had in the world and gave it away to the poor, and she chose to become a nun. She would devote the rest of her life to God. She moved into La Mesa prison, living as an angel in hell. This is her room where she lives. So this is a woman who lived only in Five Star in Beverly Hills. This is everything she owns in the world. In her little cell that used to be one of the male prisoner cells, she lives there with the prisoners and she devotes her life to serving these men. Here she is in one of the rooms of the male prisoners and you can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven guys in one small cell and she goes and ministers to them. What she would do is the most amazing thing. She would go and when they don't have enough medicine, she would go out, get medicine from the Christian missions, bring it back and treat these men. One day, one of the big gang leaders got a really serious infection and there wasn't enough antibiotics to treat him and the authorities were actually not keen to treat him. They would actually rather have him die. But what she did was go out, get antibiotics. She started treating him. At that moment, this gang leader said, well, this woman needs protection. And he let it be known that if anybody should dare lay a finger on her to hurt her, they would have to deal with him and his gang. So from that day, her name had changed to Sister Antonia. Sister Antonia could go wherever she wanted in the prison. She could drive wherever she wanted in La Mesa City. No one would even touch her. Cars would drive out of the way if she was driving with her little car because they knew that she was under the protection of the gangs. She would go and at Christmas time, these dads are in prison. They can't provide for their families. And what she would do is get them to write Christmas cards for their kids and for their families. And she would drive from family to family, give the Christmas cards, a family Christmas meal, and some gifts from the fathers in prison that she had bought. Can you imagine how much these men living in prison as outcasts and criminals would love this old lady? She had the most amazing impact on them. They loved her. They would talk to her all the time. And um, because conditions were so rough, she would sometimes talk to the prison authorities to try and make conditions better for them. But at a stage, they were all sitting inside one of the canteens <clears throat> and one of the guys started stirring trouble. Some of the officers grabbed him and tried to arrest him, but he threw them off and a riot started. They managed to take um, these guys prisoner. They got into the gun safe and they got some of the guns. It started a massive riot. They were all on top of the prison burning things. The police couldn't control them, so they called in the army. The army was ready to invade the prison. They had the SWAT team ready to go and shoot to kill. The general was there coordinating the whole team. And suddenly, the small little nun walks in and says, Excuse me, General. And he looks at her and he says, Sister, I don't have time to talk to you. She says, General, I can talk to these men. He said, With all respect, Sister, these men will not listen to an old nun. He turned around and he started talking to the SWAT team about how they have to go in and kill these men. And the next moment, he heard a shout from one of the guards. And here is the little nun walking past one of his soldiers and he's trying to stop her. And she said to the guard, you are not going to push a little old lady, are you? And he didn't know how to handle it. And she pushes her way past this man and she starts walking towards these prisoners. She knew full well that the army was going to go in and kill these men that she cared so much about. So she walked in and they stopped throwing rocks and she said to them, well, this is enough. Look, you've made your point that you are unhappy about how this works. 
if you don't put down these weapons, they are going to come in and kill you, and then you can't restart your life. This is enough, boys. All of you, go back to your cells. This is no way to behave. I don't want any of you to die. I love you way too much. The most amazing thing happened. Suddenly, this big gang leader turns around and he says, Well, you heard the lady. All these guys start putting down their weapons and they obediently march back into the prison to their own cells. The army officers couldn't believe their eyes. This old lady, with words of kindness, managed to turn some of the most hardened criminals and they would listen to her where they wouldn't listen to force. This actually happened four times while she lived there. Here are a few things um, written about her that I just found so fascinating. At 50, she traded her dresses in a spacious home for a homemade habit that's her, her nun uniform and a prison where conditions have led to inmate riots, including three that she helped quell. I'm effective in riots because I'm not afraid. I just pray and walk into it, she said. A woman in a white veil walks in. Someone they know loves them. So silence comes, explanation comes, and arms go down. I don't understand why people are so amazed, she says. To give help is easy. To ask for it is hard. And she's this a small little lady. Um, she took her uh, uh, um, maiden name again, which was Brenner. And um, she counsels these guys to try and get them ready when they leave, that they would be able to go back into society and not end in prison. She gives them soap and medicines and messages to loved ones beyond the prison's high walls. Um, and here is her message. I think this is the most powerful part of it all. Everything eventually ends. Your money, your sickness, your family, your time in jail. The only thing that won't end is Christ's love for you. I think what a powerful message. Someone who would go and from absolute wealth go and sacrifice her life to change the lives of some of the people that you and I would never even think about helping. I hope you enjoyed the story and I hope that it has an impact on your life. Now, what I'd like you to do is to please look at the questions on Connect, add them to your Google Doc, and then once you've done that, you can then answer these questions for the rest of the period. Thank you very much.